Hello and welcome to the Pepper Bird Magazine's production of Chesson Worldwide Communications 360. I'm J. Rodney Chesson, your host. For you who are connected with us on the internet, on the Pepper Bird Magazine's page on Facebook, you will see that we have developed and designed a new logo for Chesson Communications 360. Chess and Communications 360 is a part and subsidiary of the Pepper Bird magazine, which both are parts and subsidiaries of the Bamboo Bridge Corporation. We are happy to begin this series of our show, and the theme of this show is Rhode Island's Talking Drum. This week, in the news. And we are going to look at the topics. I have them on the three categories of things that are happening in our world during this week. <clears throat> we will start with President Donald Trump and the USA and his controversy with the Russia situation. Now this situation has been going on since our president became President about six or seven months ago. Now, it all has to do his economic and financial link with Russia. And this is the problem that has been plaguing President Trump since his election. We see that he has been close with Vladimir Putin, and their relationship has caused him a lot of problems too. Trump investment is locked in with Russia, Russian businessmen. This is another problem for him. And the third and most significant problem that is haunting our portis now is his son, Donald Trump Jr. Now Donald Trump has gotten himself all mixed up into his father presidency and into this political atmosphere that he is a total novice to. And now he is learning the hard way. His father came into the presidency with his own strategy of knocking heads and, stopping, and stepping on people's toes. Now that Donald is president, he is getting the backlash from all his actions during his campaign for this position. Now even the White House is full of commotion and confusion because I think Portis is trying to micromanage everything and in doing so things there are a lot of leaks, there are a lot of displeased people among his staff and it seems to be that his immediate cabinet is not able to work together. So these are compounding all his problems. Then he has his family, his children involved in his presidency. Uh, Ivanka in the White House, Donald Trump Jr. trying to negotiate and interfere with his campaign by bringing the Russian lawyer into the situation. Now this is all a backlash. And Portis is crying fabricated stories, lies. They may be, but at this stage in his presidency, there are too many controversies surrounding him, his family, and now his son, Donald Jr to just let it go. For his own benefit, I thought it was wise to bring in Mueller, the special uh, prosecutor, so that whatever doubts the public may have about Portis may be cleared out through this investigation. But now, with Portis on Twitter, tweeting every day, not being silent, get into trouble with our intelligence agencies, saying what he wants to say, 
He fails to realize that as a president of our republic and nation, he has responsibilities and obligations. This is not Trump Corporation. This is the United States of America. And he does not run these 50 states. And he has to understand that Dean Portis does not make him all powerful in our democracy. Maybe his buddy Putin can do that in Russia because I think he's been there for 20 or more years now. But that don't happen in the United States of America. So he has to sit and let this investigation take its full course. And now that the special prosecutor Mueller has set up a bad grand jury to help him investigate this case, it needs to be investigated to the fullest extent. Because with Donald Trump Jr. involved in this, and Portis refusing to release his tax returns, there is a need for a full-fledged investigation of Portis' total connection with Russia. Financially, politically, business-wise, and cordially. So, this ends this aspect of Putin and Russia. Now we look at the sanctions that Putin had to sign that were imposed by Congress on Russia. It has reached to the extent that even Congress cannot trust Putin to fully carry out the mandate of sanctions against Russia. I don't know what this problem is with Trump and Russia, but even the Congress had to get involved and sanction him, take away his uh, uh, executive powers to ensure that this Russia situation does not hamper our national security and put our nation at total risk. Now, with all of this going on, we have to deal with this Kim situation in North Korea. Right now, we are before the United Nations trying to rally up the world to initiate tougher sanctions against uh, Kim. It is very significant. This young man cannot threaten world security. This young man cannot be a renegade among civilized nations. For a man who has killed his own family, his uncle, then killed his brother, there can be no negotiation with this man because he has proven beyond a reasonable doubt that he is bordering savage. And we cannot tolerate that behavior in a civilized world. Immigration. I don't know where Portis is going with this immigration situation. He talked about it getting better. And it keeps changing. Now we're going from illegal immigrants, evaluating them, to now evaluating legal immigrants. Where are we going to go from there? Same thing with Obamacare. I mean, our protests cannot come into this administration trying to dismantle everything Barack Obama did. I mean, it seems like a personal vendetta now. And we cannot tolerate this because it is impacting our health situation, which is the main source of concern for American people today especially our elder and our young. We can't tolerate this thing. And this Obama wish hunt can't go on, Portis. We have to put some maturity to this thing and put an end to this foolishness. Our people's lives are 
are in jeopardy and we cannot condone fooling around with our national security and our people's health care. So this is where we are this week. And um, with Kim in North Korea, we are before the United Nations uh, appealing to the Security Council for a vote to impose more sanctions on him. And you know that America, China, Russia, and um, which other country? China, Russia, America, and um, France cannot vote if, this, if these sanctions are to be adopted by the Security Council against um, North Korea. I think that is to ensure that this is not an imperialist West wish hunt against Kim. But whatever it may be, I hope that the nations of the United Nations realize that this man has to be brought under control. We cannot condone a renegade in our world today. Rhode Island. Now we are on Rhode Island situation. We know recently last week we had the, this week, the beginning of this week, we had the Black Lives Matter rally at 1502 Wampanoag Trail in East Providence, that's WPRO radio station. And um, it was very successful in my opinion. We got our message across. We didn't go there to get on the air, but the leader of the Black Lives Movement, uh, which is now a coalition between the Black Political uh, Committee, uh, headed by Joe Buck or Joseph P. Buchanan, and myself with the Pepper Bird magazine and the head of the Black Lives Black Lives Matter New England chapter, Mr. Gary Densler. And he though although he spearheads the coalition on the Black Lives Movement New England, we all came together to ensure that changes are made in Rhode Island. For too long now. Blacks in the state of Rhode Island have remained silent, non-complacent, and apparently ignoring their own needs. Because here we are demonstrating because black people do not have a voice in media. All the press and media in Rhode Island basically are either white, own, or minority. Even the Providence American is not a black newspaper, it's minority. So we don't have a voice. We don't have a voice on the radio station. We don't have a voice in the news. We don't have a voice in the press. So uh, there must be something going wrong in Rhode Island. Apparently, People still feel that the black community cannot take care of themselves, that other people have to represent us like they do in Africa and other countries where Negro people live today. But that is the Negro problem. And we come to see, on all of this, Governor Gina Romano is not hiring black people. The same old six and seven. Apparently, nepotism thrives in this city too. In every small society, nepotism thrives. So all the people who are not within that nepotistic group or clan gets ostracized. And black people have suffered in Rhode Island too long, Jenna. Now it has gotten so bad, even our own Hispanic mayor, Jorge Iloza. Lord, can you imagine a mayor from suppression and oppression himself has risen to the position to lead this city and now he himself can turn into the nepotistic, sadistic behavior of ostracizing black people from City Hall. What is this? What is this? Are they using the Hispanic now to fight the black people? Because I notice every time something happens in Hispanic, they first to run there and challenge blacks or do things. And we can't continue to take this kind of thing. 
we can't continue. Equality and justice must prevail in Rhode Island. Okay? So, Mr. Jorge Iloza, I really pray that you step down from Providence City Hall. You are, you are not qualified to, team to, to run this city. You are incompetent where your racial prejudice and behavior exceeds the needs of the people of this city. You must step down or you cannot be re-elected for this position. It's a shame on you. Now, the racial issue today in Rhode Island. I thank Mr. Joseph Buchanan for stepping up and forming the Rhode Island Black Political Action Committee. We need that in this community. We got a lot of black people here with PhD, masters, and a lot, beaucoup bachelor degrees, but they have no concept of political leadership. They have no inclination of what leadership is about. Apparently, when you talk to black people about black problems, they are taught in school to analyze, not to make decisions. So they will ask you, oh, did you do this? Did you check this? Did you do this? And everything is clear before them that the racism exists. But our educated people are so chakra. In Liberia, we say chakra, like confusion. All over the world, our educated people confuse. Look at all, look at Ellen Johnson in Liberia. Can't even lead a country straight. A whole Harvard graduate, but I'm coming to Liberia. But Rhode Island, black people, y'all better wake up. Y'all cannot be silent in the city and see Jorge Loza say that no black people can work in Providence City Hall. Let me take a shot of my drink because I, I'm here. I, I just can't understand this because with all the educated people with Brown University. With all the professors at Bryant, at, 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 at Georgia and Wales, at Brown, at, 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 at what other college they got in this state here. All these educated people, here that it laws up, say black people cannot enter city hall and people remain silent. There's a problem with the educator system, with the education system in this country. It's either prejudice or the educators have lost their minds. To sit down here and hear that the mayor of Providence is prejudiced and racially biased and nobody in this state talk except Joseph P. Buchanan, that's a problem. That is a serious problem. And that is why this young man had to step to the front to form the Black Political Action Committee. Now I hope that the people in Rhode Island see it important to support this political action committee, especially blacks in Rhode Island, because you need to become politically conscious. You need to become aware of your surroundings and the things that impact your livelihood and support. And if you don't teach your children to get politically involved and concerned now. 50 years from now, black people will still be fighting in Rhode Island for a voice in the media. It has gone on since the 1800s, since the 1900s, and this is the 2000s. And I'll be damned if y'all don't get over your asses right now, it will go on until 50-50. A hint to the wise is sufficient. Now let's get on Liberia. Our poorly West African nation in West Africa has been plagued with this code of conduct that was passed by the legislature some time ago. Now for too long, Liberian leaders have been so corrupt, dishonest, deceitful, and just wicked, plain wicked, I mean just wicked. The people make the laws, they know the laws, but yet they do what they want to do. 
And these are the behaviors and attitudes that are killing not only Liberia, but the entire African continent. African leaders do not respect our nations and our laws. We cannot condone this. We cannot continue to make good laws on the books than do what we want to do. Africa is not a chieftain. Our country is a democracy. And we have to ensure that the rights of our people prevail. Because of this court that required government officials to resign two years before election, and they did not, many of them who remain serving Ellen, people say they fixed the, the, the court to stop Mel Jones from becoming a candidate, but then it also affected Conway, who is LP's VP can candidate. It also affected Cholantel, who is ANC VP candidate. And when they if, if impact these people, it is important, especially when this law was challenged and taken back to the legislature, I mean to the judiciary. And the judiciary, on a three to two judge decision, decided that the code of conduct was the law of the land. Then these people who have violated the code prior to its being confirmed as the law by the, by the judiciary, they're challenging the code again now, saying that some of them did not have an opportunity. The code is not fair. The code is not clear. Some of them changed from one party to another, but they didn't have the desire to be pre Now, what kind of foolishness that in, in the laws of our land? And what really pricked me was when Judge Philip Banks got there and decided that people could run again because he confirmed the court on the day he made the decision for the people who had challenged the court. Instead of taking, making sure that his decision was only an affirmation of the law that was challenged, he said that the law had been made on the day he made that decision, which cleared the way for people to come up to run again for the presidency of Liberia. And still with all of this, many of the political parties have not met the law for participating in the electoral process. Why? Many parties have registered with only presidential and vice presidential candidates. They have not fulfilled the other and district candidatorial positions or representative positions from the different counties. And in so doing, they have not fulfilled the laws, the election laws of Liberia. We state that all positions must be filled before parties can be approved to partake in the forthcoming election. Now, according to the news, there are about 20 or more parties that have been um, brought before the NEC, the National Election Commission, by Councillor Johnson, Cowboy Johnson, who is petitioning the the, uh, the, AN, the NEC, the commission, uh, on the grounds that these 20 parties did not meet the requirements of the 2014 election laws of Liberia, and therefore they should be barred from participating in October's election. Now these are all the other thing confusions that are coming up. How will the NEC decide on this matter? We got to see it. 
because here are the laws being changed during the time of elections because the code was changed there's a backlash now of all the other laws that people did not follow through with or people thought they weren't qualified to run are coming forth now and registering party without filling their constituencies positions and this is going to cause problem because when we tamper with our laws when we tamper with our codes we have backlashes and these are the things we will confront but don't say Chesson didn't tell you the campaigning process is on it started on August 1st Monday so we're going through Liberia the parties have started campaigning and um, I think that there um, there's we are Cummings of Freeman uh, Uri, Boyka, and I think there were seven or eight, six, seven or eight, right in between there. I can't, I can't think of it on hand. I just put it on the computer, on the internet. So this is the news for the week, the roundup, and I just bring all of this up to bring you in touch with what we've been through this week. So we look forward to touching base with you next week. You can catch us on Facebook. The Pepper Bird Magazine, um, Facebook slash backslash The Pepper Bird Magazine, and check out our news tweets every day. Okay, I'm sorry I can't receive any more friends' requests. I'm nearly my five, I've have, I've reached my five thousand limits. But The Pepper Bird Magazine is a community uh, magazine, and wish a uh, chessing. Worldwide Communications 360 is a subsidiary of. It's good to be here, ladies and gentlemen, and we thank you, and we hope you enjoy this series. We hope to talk to you next week. I've been your host, J. Rodney Chesson. <laughs>